The first DVD I ever owned was National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's one of those old-fashioned cardboard cases that was similar to the material used to package VHS tapes. It's one of those early DVDs that boasted interactive menus as a special feature in and of itself. But beyond that, the disc doesn't offer much new. I remember opening up the case, though, and being surprised by the image before me. I had seen the film dozens of times, yet I couldn't ever recall seeing the scene pictured above the chapter index. It appeared to show the Griswolds and a Santa Claus dressed salesman at the Christmas tree farm early in the movie. But even with the advent of DVD and later Blu-ray and digital, the scene has yet to make it to any home video release. Nor has any deleted scene for that matter despite Warner Brothers repackaging it every other holiday season for a new edition. Oh, talk about pissing your money away. Oh, I hope you can see what a silly waste of resources this was. But it seems a lot of people actually remember seeing this missing scene at some point. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it was commonplace for cable edits of movies to include scenes omitted from the theatrical cuts, in order to balance out the runtime with the commercial breaks. And it looks like this tree salesman scene was used in early cable edits of Christmas Vacation, as certain people remember watching it. Still, the scene has yet to surface on any home video release or online, and it got me thinking about other potentially deleted sequences from the movie. So I took a look through the shooting script, written by John Hughes, and was surprised by how many scenes were omitted. It's pretty obvious a good portion of them were filmed too, as there's little remnants of these scenes left in the final cut. You serious, Clark? Much like I've done with other films written by John Hughes, I've taken the script, production stills, and promotional material to highlight some of the scenes and line exchanges that were cut. I think we're all in for a very big treat. Just think of the finished movie as Cousin Eddie's, uh, shitter. Shitter was full! That was full of content and needed to be dumped, with these deleted scenes represented by the, uh, well, you know. No oh, shit. So let's dive into the lost version of Christmas Vacation. Honey. Now, as far as the script goes, it's pretty close to what happens on screen for the first 10 minutes or so, with a lot of the dialogue being delivered verbatim as written. We're not driving all the way out here so you can get one of those stupid ties with the Santa Clauses on it, are we, Dad? No, I have one of those at home. What we're looking for today is the Griswold family Christmas tree. Ending with the Griswolds finding the perfect Christmas tree, and then Clark realizing he forgot to bring a saw. Did you bring a saw? The first noticeable omission is then indeed the scene where the Griswolds return to the parking lot to attempt to borrow a saw from a character named Jolly Jerry. Close up trailer door. It opens on a sour looking middle aged man smoking a cigarette and wearing a dirty Santa hat. What? Close up Clark. He offers a friendly smile. I hate to trouble you, but I didn't bring a saw. The man puffs on his butt and blows smoke out of his nose. Rules say buyer provides own damn saw. He points to a painted sign on the trailer. A painted sign, black letters on white. It reads, Buyer pays in advance. Buyer don't use the ranch as a bathroom. Buyer don't cut down more trees than he paid for. Buyer provides own damn saw. Judging from the only production still available from this scene, it looks like it was also filmed as written, right down to the language on the sign. Close-up man. He scratches his nose and reaches around behind the door. Close-up Clark. He looks at the family. Sometimes you just have to ask nice. Close-up man. He holds up a shovel. This answers the question of how the Griswolds got the tree out of the ground. And while it's nice to get some explanation for that, the hard cut from Clark realizing he forgot the saw to the tree atop their car is worth deleting this scene. It is alluded to later in the movie, though, when Clark says to Eddie, Yeah, yeah. Dug it out of the ground myself. Beyond that, little details seem to exist on this sequence. I can't even seem to find out who played the Jolly Jerry character. If you think you remember seeing this scene on cable TV growing up, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear more about it. Another small omission comes when the Griswolds get the tree home, and Clark has the family making their own Christmas decorations, explaining... You know, kids, years ago, people couldn't go out and buy their ornaments. They had to make them from things around the old prairie homestead. Colored balls of mud, wood shavings, bits of yarn and string, ox horns, donkey tails, prairie dog whiskers. I'll get the lights up and then I'll give you a hand. Close up Rusty. He reaches into a bowl of popcorn. Dad, this tradition stuff is pretty cool so far, but I think it might lose its charm if it extended to our gifts. I mean, you're not planning on making our presents, are you? Russ! We're here, Dad. 
Huh, there you are. Again, it doesn't do much to enhance the story, but it's fun to see how into the holiday Clark is from the start of the story. Once again, we can assume this scene was shot, as the homemade ornaments later appear on the decorated tree. The script continues pretty much beat for beat as it appears in the movie, right down to John Hughes scripting the advent calendar scene transitions. And even Clark's nervous fumbling when talking to the lingerie salesperson, Mary. Wouldn't be the Christmas shopping season if the stores were any less hooter than they are. Harder than they are. Whew, it is warm in here. There's a small exchange, though, that takes place after Rusty catches Clark flirting with Mary, and he tries to explain the situation to Rusty, saying, Boy, did I get a lot of shopping done, and that funny-looking gal back there was so helpful. Funny-looking? That wasn't fair of me. Unusual-looking. So tall and skinny and top-heavy. The wide hips, the narrow waist, the real big eyes and lips, and if her cheekbones were any higher, gee whiz, she'd have to open her mouth to put in her contacts. But she was nice, and she knew her underpants, and that's all that's important. Dad, she was cover girl material. Yeah, for like a medical journal, sure. Gee, I hope I remember where I parked the old dickster, uh, truckster. Once again, cutting this scene right before these lines tightens the pacing, but it still would have been great watching Clark fumble his way around explaining things to his son. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? No. Very similar to this scene in the first vacation. With, well, not with girls. You think I was swimming with girls? It was just one girl. I saw her. Girl. Was that that girl? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a waitress. No, I was just ordering in. She's a... Skipping ahead a bit, there's a scene where Clark goes up to the attic to hide Christmas presents. and finds a forgotten Mother's Day gift in the process. Evidently, the gag didn't stop there, as Clark continued to find forgotten presents for his wife throughout the attic. There's even a still image that seems to showcase Clark finding one of these gifts. Now, while Clark gets trapped in the attic, the rest of the family goes shopping. But in the script, we cut back and forth between Clark and his family at the mall. Here's one of those scenes where we would have seen Clark's parents at the mall trying to decide what to get Rusty for Christmas. I don't see you anything wrong with getting Rusty an air rifle. That's what he wants. Ellen said no, you heard her. All right, Clarky had one when he was a boy, and he put out all the windows in the garage and you threw it away. No, I think he'll be just as thrilled with a manicure set. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing more important to a young fellow than well-groomed fingernails. The set also includes a nifty toenail clipper. That's a heck of a nice deal, especially in the summer. It's fun to see the family characters expanded upon a bit, but I can understand why these scenes were cut. And speaking of family, two of the best characters in the movie enter in its last act, Uncle Lewis and Aunt Bethany. It isn't every day somebody moves into a new house. They didn't move into a new house. Now, although Uncle Lewis seems to be related to Clark as he appears in the old home movie he watches, in the script, it's written that they're Ellen's aunt and uncle. As Rusty explains to his cousin, who are the old geezers? That's your mom and my mom's great aunt and uncle. What's so great about him? You're not doing anything constructive. Run into the living room, get my stogie. I'm not sure if this was something that they changed during filming or what, but the surprising element is that in the script, Uncle Lewis and Aunt Bethany have quite a bit more dialogue than what appears in the movie. And it's all just as quotable as what makes it in the final cut. For instance, later in the movie, when Uncle Lewis sets the tree on fire while lighting his stogie, Rocky asks his dad if Santa is still coming. Will Santa Claus still come? That's a good question, Rock. Catherine, if the trees... Of course he'll still come, Rocky. If he's smart, he'll stay well clear of this joint. It's a death trap from stem to stern. Lewis's line here actually made it into one of the trailers. If Santa is smart, he'll stay well clear of this joint. It's a death trap. <laughs> Adding to the evidence that a lot of these exchanges were filmed and later cut to tighten the pacing. Damn it, Bethany, he guessed it. In the squirrel scene, there's some truly twisted dialogue emitted from Lewis as well, as the squirrel eventually runs up Bethany's skirt. Close up Bethany. A puzzled look on her face. She grimaces and gives a yank on her undies. Oh my, I hope somebody got me a girdle. This one's pinching and binding something terrible. The family's in horror as they watch Bethany. Their point of view. Bethany is still unaware of what's up her skirt. We can see the squirrel scrambling around her lap. Close up Lewis and Clark. He looks up from Bethany to Clark. You can write that son of a bitch off. Nothing goes up there and lives to tell about it. But one of my favorite deleted lines from them comes shortly after they arrive. Clark, 
That's the ugliest goddamn Christmas tree I've ever did see. What the hell did you do to it? He reaches out and touches it. I'm glad I'm not sleeping here tonight. You and me both. This son of a bitch can't wait to catch fire and kill a household. Hmm, boy, do you smell that? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. The turkey, Bethany. He's smelling the turkey. Oh dear, did I break wind? Now, in the scene where the turkey is, uh, served, the movie cuts right to everyone trying to eat it. But in the script, Clark notices something else inside the turkey. Close up Clark. He fishes through the debris and comes up with a can of prepared poultry stuffing. Ed, did you make the dressing? Close up Eddie. He smiles. I gotta confess, Clark. It's the store bought. Found it in the RV last night. All you gotta do is pop the top and serve it up. You wanna load me up with a little more there? It is good. <laughs> Again, that cut from Clark looking at the turkey to the whole family works great as is. So seeing this dialogue cut is of no real detriment to the movie. It's just fun to see Eddie's stupidity know no end. Does your cat by any chance eat jello? I don't know about the cat, but I sure am enjoying it. <laughs> While the movie is definitely filled with ad-libs and quips that were not scripted, I have to hand it to John Hughes for just how perfect the dialogue was written here. Nobody's walking out on this fun old-fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. This is a full-blown four-alarm holiday emergency here. We're gonna press on, and we're gonna have the hap hap happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby tap danced with Danny K. And when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney night, he's gonna find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nuthouse. One of my favorite lines in the movie, and one I for sure thought had been ad-libbed, was Clark's outburst after receiving his Christmas bonus. But if you look at the script, it appears pretty much verbatim, right down to the Tylenol. You wanna tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is! Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? The rest of the movie follows pretty much as written, with one or two minor exceptions. But every piece of quotable dialogue, you know, the lines that you see on t-shirts and merchandise every Christmas season, comes verbatim from John Hughes's script. Where do you think you're gonna put a tree that big? Bend over and I'll show you. You've got a lot of nerve talking to me like that, Griswold. I wasn't talking to you. And in trimming out most of the stuff I featured in this video, the movie really only feels much tighter as a result. A lot of sap in here. Some of the biggest laughs come from those hard cuts from scene to scene. Still, it'd be nice to see some of this deleted footage out of context, for no other reason than showcasing just how great every performance is in this movie. You have to check every bulb. A little knot here. You work on that. Now before we wrap up, there's one final scene deleted that would have come after the end credits that I feel should have been left in. After Uncle Lewis throws away the match that ignites the explosion and sends Santa and his sleigh into the night sky, we would have seen Todd and Margot, the Griswold's neighbors, having made up and finally resting in bed. It's over, honey. Griswold had his Christmas, nothing else can happen. It's quiet, it's peaceful, all is calm. Will you just hold me? Of course. He folds her into his arms. Let's go to sleep and let visions of sugar plums dance in our heads. I'm so tense. Sweetheart, if we don't go to sleep, Santa Claus won't come. You're so cute. A long beat, and the Santa, the reindeer, and the lights crash to the ceiling into the bedroom. Fade out. While it would be fun to see all of these scenes surface someday, Christmas Vacation is also great as is. The desire to want to see more is only proof of that. But if you want more Christmas Vacation, just watch the sequel. Sack of monkey shit he is! Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? <laughs>